Over the next three nights, we are going to follow the treatment and recovery of a patient who is going to have a telescope inserted into his eye. You heard me, a telescope. Here is why Michael Betts needs that surgery. About three years ago, Michael Betts from Walkinstown in Dublin began to have problems with his vision. It's reading and all the things, the letters start to go together, you know, come together and I just couldn't make out the words, you know. Michael had developed a condition called macular degeneration. It all began shortly before his wife, Bibi, died in 2021. She was down in Orson Hall. I went down to see her and I couldn't see her face. That's what really got me, you know. Michael can now barely see. All of his day-to-day -day needs are taken care of by his daughter, Sharon, and son, Michael. We really thought that Dad would be more independent, be able to go out, meet his friends, and none of that happened, unfortunately. Dad's life has changed in so many ways. He's stuck really indoors a lot. He can't drive. He was an, a brilliant cook, and we all miss that part of it, you know? There's loads of things. That's simple things, you know? You walk into the pub and you just can't see anybody. You can see people, but you can't see their faces. You just say, no, I won't bother anymore, you know? And then you kind of, kind of give up in a way, you know? Tomorrow, Michael will have a specialised telescopic lens attached to his eye to help improve his vision. Anything has to be better than what I have. I hope to be able to see the television Read, read a book. Just so he can go for a walk and see his friends' faces. That's what I'm looking forward to for him. Because he's still got a lot of life in him and a lot of life to live, you know. We say to see my own face as well. It's like, jeez, it's almost been years ago. <laughs> lovely man and earlier on today I popped downstairs to visit Michael just as he was preparing for surgery. Michael how are you? How are you Philip? It's Philip. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Pleased to meet you. Big day. Yeah. Does it feel like a big day or are you taking yeah, this in yeah, your stride? The, big, the biggest day of my life actually. Really? Yeah. Just out of interest what can you see of my face now? Uh, I can't see your eyes. I can't okay. see my nose, I can see my cheeks. No. Can, you, can you see my mouth no, moving no, no. at all? I can't see my mouth, I mean. Okay, so you can really just see the shape yeah, of my head. Yeah, yeah. What know. are you looking forward to the most? I just uh, watch the television and read a book, you know? You're supposed to say, see my children again. <laughs> That's oh, I haven't seen their faces in a long time now. Right, well, good yeah. luck. And we'll talk to you again in a day I or two. It can't be any worse than that. Uh... <laughs> I'm sure it can be better than that. Good luck. And the man who is going to be performing that surgery on Michael is Professor David Keegan. David joins me now. You've brought along the telescopic device that yes. you're going to be putting, or you did put into his eye. Can we did see, put it. Well, there's, a, there's a replica of it there. So it looks quite small there. So small that, in fact, we had to film it earlier on alongside mm -hmm. a 50-cent yeah. piece. So it's a small, but actually inside an eye, it looks quite, it looks quite big. Because actually, that's about a four-millimetre Galilean telescope, so a very small telescope we put inside okay. the eye. And if successful, how much sight is that going to give him back? We're hoping for Michael. We know from previous studies about 70% of patients gain about three lines in vision. So to put that in context for your viewers, if you can see the top line of the chart at the opticians, you might be able to see four lines down. Really? So it doesn't won't get Michael back to driving, for example, but all those things Michael referred to there on the, on the audio about seeing his children's faces, uh, seeing the television, making it the faces that of the all environment. Becomes that possible should be that again. should be better okay. for. The obvious thing that so many people watching at home I will want to know is: Is everybody who is suffering from macular degeneration going to be a suitable candidate for this? No, th th this is the right technology and the right patient. So there's a certain set of criteria. And remember, Michael's part of a clinical trial, so we're just making sure how effective it is. We did a trial here in the matter a couple of years ago. We showed it's safe. Now we've re-engineered the device, we want to show that this one is effective for all those things. But it's not for everybody, specific set of vision criteria, you can't have had previous cataract surgery and other things, a well-motivated okay. patient. Well look, fingers crossed for Michael. Can we look to the future please? How far are we away from genomics being able to take over from having to do invasive surgery at all? 
Well, that's the real exciting thing. And to be honest, this is a transition technology. But really the future, when we further understand macular degeneration and indeed other inherited eye diseases, we'll be able to treat those with gene therapy. As we're starting to do now, we're waiting for approval in this country for a, for a drug to do just that. But for common disorders like, like macular degeneration, it really is an exciting prospect. So we're working with our colleague, Professor Jane Farrar, on this. She's based in Trinity College. But we'll also look cell transplantation, my own old research in that area that we look to be doing. So gene replacement and cell replacement will be the future. And then we can reverse the blindness of this rather than just sort of giving that magnifying aid like Michael would have. Okay. And hopefully not too far away. Okay, David, thank you very, thank much, you very for much for talking to us. Now, as you saw there, we left Michael and David just as that operation was about to begin. And what was incredible to me, at least, is it's being done under a local anaesthetic. Tomorrow night, we are going to see how it all went.